premium brushes that have a lot of advantages. I think they're a game changer in the way that they've been designed with these particular bristles. Hello, this is BJ from Hearns Hobbies, and I'm gonna be having a closer look at the God Hand paint brushes. Now, we've had these for a little while now, but um, we haven't actually talked about them uh, in detail. So, I've always wanted to use them for uh, a period of time, and then give you an idea of my thoughts on what they're like, and um, how they differ from other paint brushes, and the benefits of them. So, I've got them just here. So, I've got a bunch of these brushes that I've been using for various tutorials and also for personal use at home. Now, well, let me just show you this one here. So, here's one example here. This is how you get them when you buy them. They're in a, a little uh, plastic box. Uh, they've got a nice aluminium cap. as a solid cap, so it gives full protection. So, as I undo this, it's nice and tight. As you can see, comes off, there's quite a bit of room here, so the tip is fully protected at all times. And then, once you've got the cap off, you've got quite a nice stumpy handle here. This is all lightweight wood. And then it comes to this nicely chromed tip, which holds on to the very fine synthetic bristle here. Okay, so within their series, so they've got the white handled ones, and I'll just carefully bring this one up and they've got the blue handled ones. So the blue ones vary in that they've got a slightly uh, different feel to the, um, the bristle. The bristle itself is slightly uh, firmer and then the white ones it's got a softer bristle. Now the reason being is the white ones are um, described as being uh, more designed for an acrylic use. So acrylic paints tend to dry very quickly and hence to get a nice smooth finish you don't want a lot of resistance across the paint surface so the bristles are softer with other types of paints enamels uh, lacquers uh, you tend to want a firmer bristle and so that's where the blue ones uh, are great but either way i've used them both for both types of um, uh, paints or various kinds of paints and i, I don't think there's a reason why you only stick with one. You can use both. They do have a different feel. So you've got a softer feel with one. So you can also use that for other paints like enamels. And then even for acrylics, the firm ones give you a little bit more control. So it's up to you. You can mix and match. Depends if you like a firm brush or a softer brush, but both are on offer. And they're available with different kinds of shapes. So uh, there's the pointed ones, uh, and then there's also the flats, and then chiseled, and there's stumpy ones for um, dry brushing and quite a few different kinds so you can see them all on the website there's all a lot of different shapes and what we'll get into now is i'll show you the advantages of these particular brushes now since i've got them laid up here you'll be able to see from the top there how they vary from our traditional nine steps type brushes so these are a very old style long handled thin handle um, types of brushes so I guess when you're using these, when you've got them in your hand, so you see how they sort of fit within the hand depending on how you use it. And quite often I'll, I'll hold them like this uh, for resting, and then you'll move into your, your uh, using type um, postures. So you can hold them up tight. Everyone holds their brushes a little bit differently. Now the, the difference with the traditional ones is that the finer uh, handles feel a little bit like a pen, I guess. So you've got this natural feel. Um, and they've got a length to them, so that I guess it just feels natural. But I mean, that's the sort of thing that's been going around for many, many decades. Now, you'll notice that the guide hand ones are much shorter, okay? But they've still got good length. So as you can see, I've got this stretched out. It's still fitting in my relaxed hand. And then as I go to use it, as I'm going to the various postures for painting, it still feels really natural because what they've done here is it's been profiled so that it's very, uh, I guess, thick and short. So if I, I, I want a bit more control, as you can see here, I've got a lot more uh, finger uh, surface there where it's thicker. And then as I want more control, I can bring it down to the sharp end here because the tip itself, it's still got the same shape as a traditional style one. The other thing you'll notice too is even though they're, they're thick, they have the impression of being heavy. They're not heavy at all. They're very, very light. 
So that's the, the physical nature of the brush. The other special part about these brushes is the actual bristle itself. They're an ultra fine bristle and they're synthetic. So they can handle any type of paint, even heavy uh, solvent uh, paints like uh, lacquers. Uh, they won't affect it and they won't make them, um, uh, I guess, splay as a, a other cheaper brush as well. Uh, the other great advantage is these particular bristles are designed so that when you put them in hot water, uh, you'll be able to get them back into their fine point as they were new. So I'm going to give you a little demonstration on how to maintain these brushes because as you can see some of these I've used quite heavily and I probably haven't cared for them as well as I should have but quite easily we're going to bring them back to as new and I'll show you how you can do that on some of these more traditional brushes too. Okay so let's let's take this one for example. Now this is a flat brush that I've used quite rarely. Now it's in a fairly um, uh, good state at the moment because I've, I've done the full um, maintenance on it. So it's been fully cleaned and then dried, um, dipped into the uh, uh, the reshaping starch and then set again. So it feels like a brand new brush. Now what it was like before and I'll quickly do that, I mean it was very well used and as you see I'm displaying it out giving it, probably doing stuff that you probably wouldn't want to do with a brush normally. So you can see, this is basically looking like I'm, I'm destroying the brush. It's all splayed. And that's what it's going to look like quite often, as you can see here. I and mean, that's pretty awful looking now. Okay, so that's why I've got my cup of hot water here. So this is just hot boiling water from a kettle. So it's probably, realistically, probably around about 80 degrees, something like that. And I'll just bring it over here. All you need to do is pop that into hot water and we just roll it around a bit so the hot water the heat is going to reactivate and soften all these bristles now I'm rolling it across the side just to, to get them all, all the bristles to point inwards it's probably more important on a pointed brush but it still helps on a flat brush like this and as I've pulled it out you can see that all those bristles are already reshaped now that's wet of course, so we get some of my blotting paper here. Let's just dry it off. And then from here, I can just quickly reshape it. Just by squeezing it with my fingers. Okay, so you see that? So that's reshaped. Now the final part of this would just be to dip this into some uh, conditioning starch. So the starch is going to hold all the bristles together because at the moment there's still a couple that are just a little bit stray and that's going to make it feel like a brand new brush. Okay so that's it reshapened and let's just show you on something that's pointed I guess it's going to be a bit easier to see. Well let's try this one here. Okay so this is from the white range. I've been heavily using this one as well so let's just splay this out a bit. So you see that there? It's so really well splayed. Let's just move this around, doing a lot of damage normally. All right, so now it looks like just a weathering brush, right? It looks like just a, a mop. Okay, so you've got all the bristles splayed everywhere. Let's pop it in the hot water. Move it along the sides. Okay, so I've pulled it out. You can see that? They've already, it's already come back. Like so. Okay, so we'll just dry that off. Okay, just use your fingers to shape it up. And there you go. So you see how that points back. Okay, so those two have already just been um, treated with hot water. Points are back, even though you saw me splay them out really, really um, badly and the next step simply is to use some of this god hand starch and um, we'll, we'll get that uh, all held together so I've got some stuff that's pre-mixed here 
So I'll show you why I pre-mixed it because with hot water, it's a little bit messy to show you on camera. But let's just see if I can do it without it going everywhere. Okay, so you just need a little bit of hot water. So it's about 15 mils. Let me try this brush here. Let's see how we go. No, it's going everywhere. All right. So hence why I've got that extra there. Okay, so you get some water. Just for demonstration, I'll show you. So it comes out as a powder. Oh, didn't need to unscrew it. Actually, it has a cap like so. Okay, so it's got a cap, a little opening top, and you just have to squeeze some dashes in there. So that amount of water, just a couple of dashes. And what's going to happen is this particular starch is going to get activated by the hot water and it starts becoming a transparent um, uh, glue type uh, material. So I guess it's like any starch where you put hot water, it starts thickening up. And so that's what it's doing here. Okay, so let's just move that aside. I'll use the stuff I've pre-mixed because that looks really even. Because once you get the right hot water and you mix it up, uh, it works much better. Okay, so this stuff I mixed up earlier. So it's like a, a syrupy type of consistency. I guess it's like a sugar syrup in thickness. So as you dip your brush into it, you see that it's fully coated. So I'm going to fully coat it now, and so we'll just wipe off the excess. Squeeze it up like that. Now it's acting like a glue now to hold all the bristles in place. So as I've done so, I just quickly give a bit of a squeeze each time like this. And this is just basically shaping the brush. And as you can see from there, that's a perfectly straight, straight edge. Very tight. And then once it's dry, next time you use it, it's going to have a slightly, uh, a slight crack feel to it because it does have the, the, the solid, um, uh, solidness of the starch holding it together. And that's pretty much what you feel when you buy a brand new brush when, when they crack. And then when you put it into liquid, it'll start softening up again. So that one's fully done. All right, so let's do these um, guide hand ones that I picked up before. So that's it there. You just need to dip it in so that it coats the, uh, the bristles, wipe it off clean, wipe it off dry, and then with your fingers, just shape it. All right. That's pretty much it there. All right, so that's my flat one done. And then we'll just do this pointy one. Wipe that off. And then again, same sort of thing. So you just shape it with your fingers. This starch is gonna keep everything all stuck together. So you're not gonna have any loose uh, fibers astray. Okay, and that's it. As simple as that. So that's the uh, collection of, um, let's wipe that up a bit. So that's my um, uh, review of the God Hand brushes. So the brushes I've been using, they're uh, very high quality brushes, very good results. You'll see some of the results I've done on tutorials already with the painting of the figure and such. Uh, advantages of being uh, they're very lightweight, has a very solid aluminium cap. So just like these, which I've just maintained, you keep the cap on them. There's no chances of anything crushing them. And they're very easy to put over, unlike the very small clear caps you normally get on brushes, which you can quite often damage the, the bristles because you, you've crushed them. So like so, the other advantage is the bristles, how they can be quite easily reshaped with hot water. And then the easy uh, maintenance tip with the starch. Now the starch can be used with any brush and that just holds the, the tip back the way it is, uh, ready for your next um, uh, use. So there you go. God hand brushes, premium brushes that have a lot of advantages to them and are a very 
Um, I, I think they're a game changer in the way that they've been designed with these particular bristles and they, they fit in the hand very, very well.